What's up dudes, it's Josh, and I'm in my office today. I know that's a little weird, normally I'm in the project area, but this time I figured I'd do a little intro to explain the why. The project for this time is installing a home energy monitor into my electrical cabinet. Why would I do that? Well, when I first moved into this new house, we had some electrical weird things that were going on, including breakers tripping, lights flickering, and energy bills that were much higher than I thought they should be. Now, what I wanted was a little bit more granularity on what was coming from my utility company and going through my house. Where was all my energy getting sucked away to is what I wanted to figure out. So I installed an electrical uh, energy monitoring device by, you know, Sense. Uh, I also got, it is the Square D slash Schneider Electric version of the Sense energy monitor. Now, I'm not gonna pull any punches here. I'm employed by Schneider Electric currently, so I'm not gonna totally crap on them here, but I'm not also trying to be a salesman. This is something that I had genuine interest in doing, and it just ha so happens that my company actually sells these, which is pretty cool. Another thing that needs to be discussed here is I'm gonna be going into an electrical panel. This is more than my normal, you know, swapping out receptacles, running circuits type thing for the DIY homeowner, if you're going into your electrical panel, you need to know what you're doing or you could make yourself not alive anymore. Or, you know, worse, burn your house down and you make yourself not alive no more. Now, nobody wants that. So, if you're okay with those types of things, going into an electrical panel, shutting off your main power, using sharp screwdrivers, if you're okay with those things, then please join me. If not, then you're always welcome to, if you want to install one of these, Get electric, elect, uh, an electrical, electro, oh gosh, an electrician to install it for you. I'm totally fine with that. I won't take away your DIY cred because you still get to see and analyze and nerd out over your electrical usage, which is pretty fun, honestly. If you're okay with all that safety spiel I just did, let's go do some stuff. The Square D version of the Sense Energy Monitor is geared towards Square D products, namely the Wiser Energy System. I installed some Wiser receptacles recently, you can see there, and Square D breakers, but you don't technically have to have a Square D breaker box to install this, as you'll see. So you get your normal instructions, you got your main unit here. It's pretty small, um, it's got to fit in your panel, so it's got some ports for the interface there. And the current sensing rings right there are pretty much the most important key to this system. They sense the current coming in on your main lines. And this is the antenna interface and extender. Some mounting hardware on there. And then this is the mounting plate if you wanted to mount it to your wall external to your box. There's the interface cables. You'll see how those get plugged in in a second. And that is the whole kit right there. Let's go install it. And it's necessary to show this clip to show that you have to turn off power so you don't die while you're doing this. I even locked mine up to make sure some jack wagon doesn't fry me while I'm working on it. If your breaker's at the panel, you make sure you turn it off here and make sure you take off your door very carefully. Just to be safe, you don't want anything contacting if it's live. Here's our stuff right here. I don't speak this language, so probably not there. Okay, here's the big thing. Connect the power wires, compatible with Square D 30 to 15 thermomagnetic circuit breakers. So there's three methods here. Dedicated circuit breaker method, add a new Square D brand two pole circuit breaker in the load center. Now I will say, if your circuit breaker panel is not Square D, that is not a good idea. Make sure you 
research that first. With the circuit breaker off, connect the black power wire, blah, 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 blah. Two wire rated lug method. So if you have an existing Square D brand thermal magnet breaker, two pole circuit breakers have terminals that can accept two conductors, you can do this. Here's two breakers. This one is the Siemens type that my panel is supposed to have. And you can see here where it screws in. There's only one location for a wire to go, just underneath that one screw. Um, same deal with this Cutler Hammer or Challenger panel breaker. Same thing, w only one area for a wire to go underneath. Unlike what they describe in the instructions, as the Square D breakers that are compatible with easily adding this to your system. Or you use the pigtail wiring method, which is what I'm gonna use. With the circuit breaker off, create a splice connection to the two pole circuit breaker following the NEC and circuit breaker manufacturing guidelines for a splice connector type and wire size. For all three methods, attach a white wire to an appropriately sized terminal on the neutral bus. So with this method, we connected our neutral and we connected the two incoming to this circuit breaker, but we used the pigtail method. And I'll show you two different ways I did that. So here's our interface cord, pulling it out. Looks like it's 18 gauge. Now, when you're connecting to a larger circuit breaker, you need to make sure if you're doing the splice connection method, you have to have the right size wire and the right size wire nut. So you need to Google or figure out what size wire for that amperage. And I'm using a 30 amp breaker, so that means 10 gauge wire. And you also need to have a compatible wire nut that is able to accept that many conductors. In this case, it was a red wire nut. And you can see that I, uh, I'm putting two wires together, but I need three wires. So that was pointless. Showing you that people make mistakes and you got to figure that out. So yes, you need to have the interface wire from the device, the splice wire that's gonna to go to your breaker, and then the incoming wire that used to go to your breaker, if you're gonna do this. You wire up them all together, and they call me the over taper. I love to use lots of electrical tape. Put it in there, tighten it down to the appropriate torque. Always do a pull test. You'll see me do here, try to yank it out. And remember this is a two pole breaker, so you're gonna do this two times. I tried to keep all the same colors together. And uh, putting this wiring on in here is, it's hard. It's it's 10 gauge wire, so it's, it's, uh, it's very rigid. And as I was doing it, I did not feel great about it. I mean, it's probably fine, especially with all the tape and all the other stuff. Um, but I'll show you a method in the next you know, few minutes that uses something that's a little better. Spoiler alert, it's lever nuts. Once you got all those connected, you have to make sure you land the neutral back on there and always tuck your wires away. Make sure the screws are not gonna hit them when you put them back in the panel. So that's a great way to start a fire. Connect, connect the power cable, current sensors and antenna to the monitor. Be sure the sensor Insert the sensor into the outer port, the middle port is for solar sensors. Clamp sensors around mains. As a precaution, first plug the sensors into the monitor. Clamp the sensors around the service main so that both labels are facing the same direction. The direction of the sensor should be relative to the power source. Once placed in the final orientation, push the sensor lock until you hear a click.
install the antenna using the back of a screwdriver, punch out the knockout cover in the electrical panel, then insert the antenna. So that's what we did on the bottom. The antenna just kind of pushes down, snaps in that little knockout pretty easy. It sucks that it's behind my wall, but it still works. There's the final install. It's kind of just rammed in the bottom. I didn't want to mess with it mounting externally because I don't know what the codes are for that. Please chime in if you know. And like I said, this is a couple months afterwards. I didn't like those wire nuts, so I used the old Wagos, Wagos, Vagos, however you want to say it. Uh, and this is one that is rated for that 30 amps and is rated for those cables. So make sure you get the right one. That's the 221. It's able to take 10 gauge wire and still over taping stuff. You will not stop me from doing that. It installs the exact same way as wire nuts and it just makes me feel better. These connectors are rated for stranded wire so I'm not trying to wrap that stranded wire around the two on the wire nut. I think it's just a better install but it's up to you with personal preference just like you might not want to tape. Just love taping so much. So much tape. Turn everything back on and see if you're in business. And mine popped up there pretty quick. And once it connects, it's going to verify the install and make sure everything looks all right after you set up your Wi-Fi. Test your connection to the internet and everything should be good. Now, set up the account just like any other account. I'm not going through that. And once you start, you're not off to the races just yet. It has this uh, learning period that it goes through. So you can see that it's bubble building in progress. You will immediately be able to access the power monitor and see your loads in real time, but it doesn't add things for a couple days. Here's a pop-up of it saying it found something as it detects your usage it will pop up these these things here and it gives you a guess based on community usage what the device could be this was my fridge so you can select that name and it kind of locks it in there this is over a period of a good few days of these devices kind of rolling in and it is user input dependent. So if it says this might be your fridge and you think it's something else, you can select that, but just know that you need to be kind of sure. It gives you some good guesses, but I have definitely miscategorized a device before and had to go back and change it. So just look out for that. You can see all your stats. You can see how much it uses per month. It starts building. And this data aggregates over time and becomes you know, more reliable as it, it looks at your usage. Here's kind of the main dashboard. You can see some bubbles for the usage. I think it's pretty cool. And that does happen in real time. Uh, you, it's got your little news thing here as it detects devices. It gives you little updates. And as you can see, it's always got a, a running total there, so you can always kind of see your usage at all times. Right now, it's not detected for anything really, so it says everything is other or always on as it's not detected much. That was probably my water heater before it was detected. You can look at your always on loads, which represents everything that that is plugged in all the time that it's not kind of got an energy profile for. It's using what it calls vampire power, so VCRs. Wait, what's a VCR? Uh, computers, stuff like that that's plugged in, wall chargers. 
it doesn't necessarily pick those up. It puts them in this category. Here's something that I noticed, you know, first off was I have two fridges. Why do I have two fridges? I don't have two fridges. The only thing I figured out was fridge two was my deep freezer, which I've had for, I don't know. That was the first thing to go because all it has is popsicles in it. So that's not worth $100 a year to me. So it got the plug pulled. So that was instant savings since I'm not using it really. It's stuff like this where it brings you awareness of things that you're using when you can actually see what the big draws are. Like here, obviously, the first thing I'm looking at is my water heater. Why is it used so much electricity? And that is a target for another day for sure. Just going through the rest of the features here. This is the meter feature, and you can see your real-time use, you can see it taken away in all your peaks and valleys from your utility company. And from my experience, this is actually very accurate to the bill I get in the mail. You're able to look at trends and see what time you're using stuff the most and what your behaviors are kind of doing to make your energy use what it is. You can use that as a tool to pinpoint anything you might need to do for savings. It's able to give you a summary and compare it to others in your area and see if you're above or below average. After a few months of use, you start accumulating more devices and you can kind of get down to each one and see what it's costing you. It's stats for and it's timeline of what the monitor sees as far as its use. One of the cooler things that I like is you can set notifications based on usage. Um, what would that be helpful for? I mean, the, the main thing that I use it for, my dishwasher, you can set alerts. So if it's running and then it turns off, it's pretty easy to get an alert. So I know when I can go, you know, change the dishes out. Works for, you know, everything. Like another example would be if something was using too much energy, get an alert. You know, there it is. It's pretty easy to set up. Alert me when dishwasher's off for 20 minutes. And acting on those notifications helps me maintain my cred as Dishmaster. One of my favorite sections that's still kind of experimental, you can see here is the Sense Labs, and it can check for motor stalls, which would be really helpful preemptively diagnosing a, a bad AC motor. It can check for your power quality from your utility company and it gives you kind of a score based on, on that. You can see the voltage dips. You can see if your load is balanced, all that stuff to make sure you're getting good power. It could really be helpful to someone who had uh, strange stuff going on. Um, and this also could check for floating neutrals, you know, which could contribute to that electrical weirdness I talked about. And here's my device lift after a few months. It's detected all the major stuff, but you can still see there are some undefined devices. And I've left that like that because I'm still trying to figure out which ones those are. And obviously some loads can be different um, and might need to be combined as you do this. One method of identifying loads is pretty obvious. You just go to the device and flip it on and flip it off and see your usage move and you can more specifically identify that device. And don't act like you're not impressed with my garage chandelier bros. Now let's talk some expectations and things you should know if you want to buy one of these. First of all, this device doesn't save you money. It helps you see how you can save you money. In no time flat, you'll turn into your dad and you see the dollar signs flowing out of the refrigerator door when it's open because now you know that refrigerator turns on every 10 minutes and it uses X number of watts and that charges you over time. So it helps you modify your behaviors by looking at and seeing your usage. 
As you saw from the demo, it does need your help to select the de individual devices. It can provide some good guesses, but it's up to you to provide that user input to make it work right and report correctly. One thing that I see on a lot of reviews of this is that it doesn't get all your loads. Now, you have to think on this a little bit to manage your expectation. Variable loads, that is to say loads that speed up and slow down, um, are, that are different every time you turn it on, like say a dimmer on a light switch, you might have it all the way up. You might have it all the way down. It might use different amounts of energy every time. This monitor does not correctly identify that. It's not able to, you know, each, each electrical signal doesn't have a name like Joe or Bob that it, it's going to be the same every time. So it's got some smarts in there, but that's just something you need to manage your expectations on. On offloads work the best for this. If you need more granularity on a variable load, you can install a different device to do that, like say a receptacle or a dimmer that has that energy monitoring built in. Now, one of the you know bigger things is if you have an ECM motor, an electrically commutated motor, like a speed up, slow down fan on your main AC system, it's not gonna necessarily get that exactly right every time. So you just kinda have to manage your expectations for that. And of course, you're going to see that total usage on the other or, you know, it's it's going to be reflected. So you're going to be able to see it. So keep that in mind. And the last thing is this thing's going to get better with more data and more community learning. All those guesses are going to get better and better as it sees more devices and as that database gets built up. And this thing's been out for, I think, two to three years. So it's it's got a good base but it, it still needs uh, more learning. And all, you know, as, as more users come in, into it, you're gonna have more data points that's gonna give you more accurate results as far as where you are and where your devices are, and it can highlight those problems uh, beforehand. So that's something that is, you know, I'm optimistic for the future for in this device, seeing how it gets better. I'm certainly happy with my investment in this from the knowledge that I got from how my electrical system works and you know some future improvements that I can make and be able to verify down the road. And that's it. Hopefully this got you enough information that you need for this electrical piece of the future. And uh, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments section. Happy to answer. Until next time, this is Josh saying, get out there and go do some stuff.